So in this video, we're going to talk about how to organize our code a little bit more. It's starting to get slightly more complicated, and it'll just keep getting more and more complicated as we go. So there are a couple strategies that you can use to organize your, your code. One is to use tables, and another is to use functions. So let's talk about that. Um, go ahead and go to tick 80, the Create tab. Make sure you're logged in. And let's load up lesson three. Okay, hit escape to get into the code. Um, so as we add more and more objects, like a player, an enemy, um, coins that might be picked up, things like that, um, we're going to want more and more X and Y values, possibly speeds, information about each item that that might have names that kind of overlap like each item might have an x and a y some of them might have speed but we don't want to just say speed and have everything have the same speed potentially so what we can do is to add a table with the name of our object. So for example, player or mine is named Blobby. So I'm going to do Blobby equals, we're going to do a curly brace here. And then we're going to tab or space in our items. And each item needs a comma after it until you get to the end, and then after the end item, oops, that would need um, an end curly brace. So curly braces are, if you look on your keyboard next to the P key, you'll see two keys that have straight braces and curly braces. And the curly brace, you have to hit shift. Okay, so that's where you find that. So now that we've done this, I'm, just, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what happens if I try to run. It's going to tell me, um, let's see, it's, it's not super helpful, compare nil with number. Um, basically, this error is telling me that it can't find a variable. So it's looking in function tick, um, it looks like maybe line 22. So let's take a look at line 22 and see if we can find what's going on there. It's a little bit, oh. So here, when it runs, it's not calling this function until but the button is pressed. So it doesn't really notice that there's something wrong here yet. But when it tries to run this code, it's like, if y is less than zero, and it's thinking to itself, what's y? I don't know what y is. And that's because we've enclosed our y, x and y values inside this table called blobby. So now we have to do what's called refactoring our code. And for every y value, we need blobby.y. So if you're used to um, a language like Java or C Sharp, this is called dot notation. It's used in kind of a lot of languages that are object oriented. Um, I don't want to get too much into that because it's not relevant to what we're doing, but just FYI, this is a technique that's used in a lot of languages to use this dot notation to say, I have this thing and there's something attached to it that also has a name. Okay. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and everywhere I find a Y, I'm going to replace it with blobby.y. Oh, I must have copied that wrong. So I'm going to pause, do that. You do it as well. And same for X, it needs to be the player or whatever you called yours, probably not blobby, whatever you're player's name is, or just player, dot y dot x, and also dot speed. So whatever you call the table, add that in front of x, y, and speed. All right, so I've replaced all my x's, y's, and speeds with blobby dot x, y, or speed. We might end up doing something a little bit different um, eventually with our check limits, like when we're checking the side of the screen to see what we want to do with our player. We might end up doing this a little bit differently later, but for now, we're going to go ahead and leave it as blobby. Okay, 
So that's how you use a function. So if I wanted to add another sprite, I could make um, another table, name it enemy or coin or what have you, and give it x, y, potentially speed, maybe damage or um, health or whatever it might have associated with it. We're, go we're not going to do that yet, but in the future we will. Okay, so then we have all of this code here that is a little bit hard to read, like you can't just look at it and know, oh, that's what that does. So instead of having all this code here, what we're going to do is after we clear the screen, we're going to call two functions. One of them is going to be to move Blobby, or your uh, character, the player. And then the other one is going to be to check the limits that you want the character to have. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to create two more functions. Oh, I changed the font to the skinny font so I could see my whole um, lines here. So I'm going to change it back to the regular font. Um, okay, so we're going to do move, I'm going to call mine move blobby. Yours might be called move player, move Steve move Janice, whatever your character's name is, move ghost. Okay, and then we're also going to build a function that is called check limits. So these two lines are called function calls. It's like in, when we had snap, we would build um, a custom block and then we would drag out that block and use it in our code. This is like dragging out the block and using it in our code. So I could use these more than once if I wanted to. For now, we just need it once every time the, um, the game loop runs 60 times a second. So each game loop, we only need to move Blobby one time and check the limits one time. And it'll happen a lot because it's happening 60 times a second. Okay, so we're calling the function, but we haven't actually built the function yet. So we're going to need to build functions. So I'm going to, I like to kind of separate out my code. I feel like the tick code and the initialization part is like the main part of the code. And then I'm separating that out into, um, I'm kind of separating the next area. It's going to be all of our functions that we write to make the code work. So... The first function is move oh, function move lobby. Oops. And in that function, I just want all my move code. All the code that I was using to move blobby. looks good and then at the end of the function I want to say end so we have our function header it has the name of the function in it if we had any inputs for the function like something some information that the function required we could put it inside these parentheses but we don't have that yet we'll talk about that more in another video we have all the code that we need in order to move blobby when the but when a certain button is pressed then we change Blobby's position. And then at the end of the function, we have to say end so that the code knows that it's done. Okay, so that was move Blobby. And next we need check limits, which is just gonna use this other code. I know that I misspelled that because it was, it didn't turn orange. Said check limits. Yes, check limits. Make sure that your spelling and capitalization is exactly the same. Otherwise, the code is not going to know that you mean the same thing. Like as humans, we might read it and be like, oh, that's just a typo. I know that you really mean meant check limits. But if I did something like check limits with a lowercase l, the code is not going to know that that's the same thing. So it's super picky about stuff like that. Make sure you really double check your spelling and your capitalization um, when you're using function names and variable names. Okay, so in this function, we want a 
all the code that we used to check whether the whether the character was on the screen or not. Okay, and then again, at the end of that function, we need an end. So everything's nicely indented. There's the end of that function. All right, so let's test this. Oh, let me get rid of some of these spaces here. Okay, so we're clearing the screen. We're moving Blobby if some button was pressed. If no buttons were pressed, this will get called, but nothing will happen. Okay, and then we're checking to see whether the character is trying to go off the screen. And depending on how you set it up, right now I have it so that it'll wrap around the edge, but remember if you wanted it to stop at the edge, these numbers would match. So it'd be zero and zero instead of having them switched. Um, so we're moving Blobby, we're checking the limits, seeing if he went off the screen. If he went off the screen, we're doing something, either bringing him back or sending him to the other side. And then we're actually drawing the sprite. So when we're actually moving blob Blobby and checking limits, we're not really moving the sprite. All we're doing is changing the values of that character's X and Y variables. Um, and then the part that actually makes the sprite move, if it moved, is here. Okay, let's see if we made any mistakes here. I'm gonna hit escape. I'm gonna run. There's Blobby. Looks like it's moving around pretty well. Looks good. I can go up, down, left, right. I can go diagonal still. I wrap around. Looks like all my code is working properly. If you get any errors or if something is not working properly, go back and double check your spelling. Make sure you have um, that table name dot x dot y dot speed for all of the places where it comes up except this very first part because this is setting up that um, kind of naming convention. One other thing I wanted to show you is now that we're using functions, this little menu, it's called the outline. Oh, I have to hover over here. So outline says at the very top. Um, this will allow you to bop around really fast to different parts of your code. And as your code gets longer and longer and longer, this is gonna be really helpful. All right, so that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna talk about jumping and gravity. All right, see you then.